500. Okay. We speak of people who are aesthetics only in what? In mind and emotion. But in the actual participation, they participate as normal people. But there's no excess in their lives. They fully understand the nature of man's trials in this world. Meaning, I mean, let's I'll give you an example. A person has to go through a minefield. And to go through the minefield without a mind detector, you have to have a level of attentiveness and cognizance to not to miss a detail of the terrain, otherwise God forbid you could be you could be killed. That's what life is. Understanding that any degree of distraction will cause you to fail, and what is distraction? Excess. So although I live as a normal human being, what I need, and I don't totally detach myself to live in a desert or in a cave, and to live almost abnormally this person having an understanding of the reality of life, the trials and tribulation of life, he's always on the lookout, so to say, for the pitfalls of life. And therefore he sees <coughs> the material as not as something positive, but as always putting himself, he's always in the position of jeopardy. Umar Sorabo, he sees himself imprisoned in this world. Vige Russo, he feels himself detached from the world of the spirits, means from the spiritual worlds. And because of this, they detest the world and its material. They detest it. I'll give you an example. A person has a health issue, and he's not permitted to eat certain foods, and he's conditioned himself when he sees those foods, because if he once had an incident, he sees it in the most negative. Because he understands that if he's attracted to that, what it could do, do to him. The person is an alcoholic. And he understands that if he has even the smallest amount of alcohol, it could destroy his life. So when he sees alcohol, alcohol, all kinds of red lights go off in his mind. That's this person. Understanding the trials and tribulations and the, and, and the, the, the danger of being involved in the material, therefore he detests it, he wants to stay away from it. He sees it in the negative. <laughs> and they yearn for the world to come. They wait for death. But yet they live responsibly. They prepare their provisions for the time when they have to journey. And they make a calculation what they've achieved before they arrive, before they leave. For when they arrive, before they leave, and they only take from this world, he says, the bare minimum, even less than they, what they need. I put it right in here. This, this is the way they live their lives. Not, their, not, not all their lives. I'll give you an example. The Rambam says that if you want to acquire the crown of Torah, 
Pasmel, Tolchal Maim Shur, Tisha, or it's Tisha and Chaitzar Tichya. That's the only way you can achieve the crown of Torah. You have to deprive yourself at every level, the bare minimum. Let's say you've already achieved it. Could you really be involved to a greater degree? Is that only initially to achieve it? Or I'm not saying you should become indulgent in the material, but let, then afterwards, once he's achieved it, now he, did, he allows us of more than paspemelech. He allows more than that. Would this undermine and cause him to lose his status of Torah? Seemingly not. <coughs> but of course, because the mindset, see, you have to wean yourself from that initially to, to achieve something. Once you've achieved it, as long as you maintain control, you're okay. Some say, initially, the Ovos HaKadoshim, they were all shepherds. Why did they choose to be shepherds initially? Because the only way a person can have solitude and remove himself from many things and to live his life as he chooses is when you're removed from society. So being just with the sheep, you live as a shepherd. Right? What, what kind of wardrobe does a shepherd have? You know, he's in the, he's in the pasture all day with the sheep, and he he has his provi- what are, what are his, his provisions, right? Vegetation. That's it. And that that's really the first level. That's the most extreme level of, of aestheticism. Abstinence totally removed. He's living with nature at the bare minimum, and his mind could be fully focused on avodas Hashem. Later, after they developed. The Ovos, then they came, they intermingled in society. And then they assumed their responsibility to the world. But initially, there was their own personal self-development. They were totally removed. Same thing with Moshe Rabbeinu. Right, well, right. well, there he had no choice. He had no choice. No, he had no choice. Well, there was not a problem because in the desert, we, we, they, 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 didn't, they didn't participate. There was no material. It was the money. There was nothing but, but spirituality in the desert. The whole environment was a spiritual environment. So you have to say, so you have to be more than Abrios. You should be more than Abrios. He says, Abrios, Lord, Lord, and Abrios. That if the society is conducive to spirituality, you're involved, but it's not conducive. They're not, but but uh, the different levels. Person uh, gets himself in education. He has to be in school for so many years. Uh, you know, you should be out there in society. You should forget about your studies. The, 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 is, is that correct? It, it, everything has its time in life. In this stage, I have to focus on my studies. Once now that I've developed, okay, now I go into society. What does it mean? That, what, why, why should a person yearn for death? What, why should a person do? The introduction is he feels like he's an exile. He feels in this world he's an exile. That's only for a person to maintain his understanding of the value of the material. If you feel that I'm, I'm forced to be, if you hear only, uh, I'll give you an example. The, the Chof Tzayim is a beautiful, beautiful martial allegory. In Europe, they still have, they had fairs. The fair it was once a year, and you would go to attend the fa- fair to purchase whatever you needed, your inventory for the year. So this man, but there were all these uh, ancillary businesses which were created to accommodate the people who, who would participate in the fair. So they would open all kinds of restaurants, and they'd have all kinds of cuisine, uh, cuisines because people came from all over the world to, to attend these fairs. So this person comes to the fair, and it's about there's one week left at the fair, and the fair is for two months. So he meets at one of his friends and says, so the friend says, to him, says so how are you doing? Did you finish buying inventory for the year? He says, you know, I haven't even finished going to all the restaurants. The, 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 the rest, it, it's, it's one of a kind. He says, but you realize you have a week left at the fair. If you don't take advantage of the last week, you're not going to be able to support your family for the, for the rest of the year. Your family's going to starve. What are you being distracted with, with attending the restaurants? The, 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 you only go to eat 
to be able to accommodate yourself, to maintain yourself, to be able to purchase what you're supposed to purchase. You're a fool. He says, when a person comes to this world, what are you coming here for? The life, material existence is a means, it's not an end. But if you get distracted with the means and the means becomes the end, then you miss the boat. That's the Chofetz Chaim's point. So if a person sees the world, I'm here to return home. person misses his family. Every day that he's away from home, he yearns to get back to his family. He wants to get back here. But of course you're here to be able to provide for your family. But simultaneously, he doesn't get distracted understanding why he's here. I'm here for one reason. To succeed and do for my family. That's, that's, that's the focus of person. So that's, that's the yearning for death. When you yearn for death, I can't wait to get back. That doesn't allow you to get distracted, to think that being here has any value unto itself. Its value is purely for after I leave. That's its value. It's to achieve and leave this existence. But why? But why? But not, not, for, the, not for, the, for the physical. That's to leave Klal Yisrael and to do, bring more glory to God. But it wasn't here for here. It was to address exactly why physical existence exists, which is only for his glory. No, it is, again, I once said, why did Moshe Rabbeinu name his first child Gershom and his second child Eliezer? Eliezer, Elikei, Ovi, right? Sequentially speaking, he was first saved from, from the sword of Paro, and then he came to Midrash. So this is Bechor, his firstborn should have been Eliezer, his second child should have been Gershom. Gershom, I'm a stranger in a foreign land. But he names his first child Gershom, and the second child Eliezer. Why? So what do you say, David? Because if you don't feel like a stranger, that you don't belong here, you get totally, you, you become you become drawn into the society and you believe that's your location so the first thing you have to set set the guidelines this is not my location I will never forget this now regardless of how much to what degree I succeed here I don't belong here I'm here for a time to accomplish what I have to then I'm out of here that was the mindset and then by having that focus and understanding then one doesn't get distracted so always thinking about death, I'm, I can't wait to leave this existence, then you understand this existence has no value, as attractive as it may be, unto itself. It's here to accomplish and leave. speaks about it. It's brought. The Namak Sufi is a different, different concept. You don't have to do this? There's Namak Sufi means, no, you have to earn. To, to earn it. Then you can go yeah, to yeah, the but then, yeah, but, yeah, but that's, 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 only, that's the value of, 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 of your accomplishment. If you're, given, if you're given everything gratis, so what did you accomplish? It's not the same value. It's a different concept. Yeah.